A great day to one and all. I am Mr. Kim J.C. Ensho, and today I will be discussing with you licensure examination for teachers or let review for mathematics majors, set B. So I hope you have your pens and paper with you. Pause the video from time to time, and let's see if you will get the correct answer. All right. So I believe that the PDF copy of the presentation is with you. And for the directions, write the letter of the correct answer before the number. If the correct answer is not found among the choices, write E. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number one, how many subsets does the set A with elements one, two, and three have? Is it three, six, eight, uh, or 10? What do you think? All right, let's see if you got it. So for this question, we have to remember that a finite set with n elements has two raised to n subsets. So I will no longer prove it here, but this is the concept. Of these two raised to n subsets, it includes elements with no cardinality, one, two, three, all the way until sets with a cardinality of n or simply the set itself. So since the given set A has three elements or it has a cardinality of three, then we could say then that it has two cube or two times two times two or eight subsets in all. If you answered letter C, you got it right. Okay, number two. If A is a set with elements one, two, three, four, and five, and B with elements four, five, seven, and eight, what is A union B? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? What do you think? If you see questions like this, when we speak about union, A union B is the set of all X such that X is either an element of A or X is an element of B. That element could be that from the first set or from the second set. In other words, to take the union of two sets, we simply combine or list together all of their elements. However, we have to make sure that if there are some elements that are common in both sets, we still have to write them only once in their union. And combining the terms of sets A and B and copying common terms exactly once only. So we have here A union B as the set containing one, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight. Letter D. Number three. If A, um, for number three, it's the same given for not like number two. But this time you are asked, what is A intersection B? So union is your U, intersection it's this inverted U. Is it A, B, C, or D? For this item, when we speak about intersection, it is now the set of uh, A intersection B is a set of all X such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. In other words, intersection is a set of all elements that is common to the sets involved. You could see that for sets A and B, they both have four and five as elements. Hence, we could say that A intersection B is equal to the set 
containing 4 and 5. Letter A. I hope you got it. Number 4. The colors of a rainbow are listed down on pieces of paper, rolled and placed in a fishbowl. A certain paper is drawn at random. What is the probability that red or green is drawn? Is it one seven, two sevenths, three sevenths, or one over forty nine? Now let's see if you got it. We know that there are seven colors in a rainbow. We have your Roy G P, your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And since we are interested in getting the probability of a red or a green, and these are two outcomes that are favorable for this event. Hence, that's two out of seven possible outcomes. Therefore, the probability of getting a red or a green color is two over seven. And that's letter B. All right, so far, so good. Number five. So the same thing, the same set of conditions for number five, uh, as of number four rather, you are asked, what is the probability that what is drawn is not yellow? Is it one seven, three sevenths, five sevenths? or six sevenths. What do you think? For this problem, we, could, we are interested in finding the probability of not yellow. There are seven colors in a rainbow, as mentioned earlier, but there are six of them which are not yellow. These are red, orange, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And thus, the probability of getting uh, a color which is not yellow is 6 out of 7 or 6 sevenths, letter D. Number 6. Consider the table below. What is the probability that a male or a scholar is chosen at random? So you could see here. We have this some sort of uh, table. For male scholars, there are 20 of them. For male non-scholars, there are 40 of them. Female scholars, there are 30. Female non-scholars, there are 10 of them. So is it 9 tenths, 7 tenths, 2 fifths, or 1 fifth? What do you think? For this one, since you are um, having the word or, so it's either having a characteristic of being male or being a scholar. So any of those two is okay. And those uh, that belongs or satisfies the condition are these 20 male scholars, 40 uh, male non-scholars, and 30 female scholars. Because they have the attributes of being a male, if we look at the data horizontally, or this one here, the characteristics of being a scholar. So we could see that there are 20 plus 40 plus 30 plus 10 or 100 people in all. But there are only 20 plus 40 plus 30 or 90 who are males or scholars in this case. And since we're looking for the probability of having a male or a scholar, then you have to divide 90 over 90 over 100. Or in simple terms, we have 9 tenths. Thus, letter A is the correct answer. Number seven. The same table earlier. What is the probability that a female non-scholar is chosen at random? Nine-tenths, seven-tenths, two-fifths, or one-tenth? 
What do you think? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? From here, we could actually see that female non-scholars, there are 10 of them based on this uh, table. And that's 10. Out of the 100 people, therefore, the probability of getting a female non-scholar is 10 over 100, dividing both numerator and denominator by the GCF, which is 10. So you have 1 over 10. Letter D. Number 8. A six-sided die numbered 1 to 6 is rolled twice. How many outcomes are there in all? Did you go for 6, 12, 36, or 72? So if you see a problem like this, we could actually invoke what we call the fundamental counting principle. We know that there are six outcomes for every roll of a die. By the fundamental counting principle, which states that if a certain independent event can occur in M ways, the other event in N ways, then you just get the product MN, the total number of ways for them to occur together. And hence, we have six times six. The first six here is the number of outcomes for the first die. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And the second six here is the six is the number of outcomes also for the second die. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six times six, we have 36 possible outcomes in all. Letter C. Number nine. Three coins are tossed. What is the probability that exactly two heads come out? Is it three eighths, one half, five eighths, or three fourths? Now, what do you think? From this one, we could actually see that by the fundamental counting principle, we know that uh, a coin could, uh, that could result to either a head or a tail. But since the first coin, uh, each coin could have two outcomes. So here's one for the first toss, two also for the second toss, and another two outcomes for the third toss. And that's two times two times two, or two cube, or eight possible outcomes in all. Since eight, it's just a small number. It's quite manageable to list all the outcomes. So you have uh, the eight outcomes are, you could have head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, tail, and tail, tail, tail. Please note that if you are doing this method, make sure that you are not going to duplicate any outcome or else your answer will be most likely be wrong. So you could see here, we have here HHT, HTH, and THH. Three out of the eight possible outcomes that show exactly two heads. Thus, the probability of getting exactly two heads is three eighths. Letter A. Number 10, in how many ways can we answer a 10 item true or false test? It is assumed that each item will be answered by any of one, any one of the choices only and that no item is left blank. Is it 20, 32, 1024, or 2048? What do you think? From here, we can still utilize the fundamental counting principle. Each item is answerable in two ways. So here's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth. That's why since each item is answerable in two ways, then you have the product 
of these 10 uh, twos. Or when written in exponential form, that's 2 raised to 10. And utilizing or by multiplying or by using your calculators, you will get 1,024 ways to answer a 10-item true or false test using the conditions given earlier. Letter C. I hope you got 10 over 10 so far. <laughs>